David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have for you a pen from Graf von Faber-Castell, and that pen is called the Guilloche. Uh, what I'm going to do today is discuss a little bit about the Faber-Castell brand, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for in regard to this pen. I'll show some measurements and some size comparisons and provide a writing sample. Uh, and stay tuned for how you can win this very pen, which has a retail value of $350, courtesy of Faber-Castell, who provided this pen for review and for me to give it away to one of you. Uh, Faber-Castell is a German brand. Uh, they were founded back in 1761, so they've been in business for over 250 years, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. When it began, Faber-Castell focused on pencils. Uh, they created the very first branded writing instrument. And in 1993, uh, Graf von Faber-Castell was launched. Uh, it's the luxury marquee of Faber-Castell. Uh, if you'd care to hear a little bit more about the history of the company, you can check out my review for the uh, Faber-Castell Loom, uh, where I go into a bit more deal, detail about the history. Uh, it has some very interesting history to it. So enough history, let's look at the pen. It actually comes in this box, the sleeve slides off. And then uh, this box is what the company describes as being uh, chamois colored. Uh, on the front, it's actually printed with the uh, Graf von Faber-Castell logo, uh, or name and their, their brand logo. And the box is sealed with a magnetic catch. Then inside we have a use and care guide. Uh, and then actually inside here, these black pieces are uh, actual wood, which is a nice quality touch that's nice to see. Uh, and then inside we have a pouch and inside the pouch is a pen. And this pen is the Graf von Faber Castell Guilloche. Uh, this particular model is called Gulf Blue. Uh, it's one of three new colors introduced to the Guilloche line. Uh, there is the India Red, Gulf Blue, and Viper Green. Uh, these join the existing eight colors to make a, a very nice varied lineup. Uh, the pen is a metal, brass I'm assuming, uh, and all of the trim here is rhodium plated, which gives it a very nice look, though the trim can be a bit of a fingerprint magnet. I find myself having to wipe down the pen on, uh, on a regular basis to maintain the uh, sleek, pristine look. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it's circular and indented with a, a grooved design around the rim, not unlike that of uh, many coins here in the U.S. Uh, and it's shaped a bit like a crown. Uh, now, I'm not sure if this was intended in the design, but this uh, wide top of the cap uh, makes it very easy to stand the pen upright. Uh, when I use the pen, uh, especially at work on a, my desk, I find myself standing it upright when I'm not using it. And it's actually stable enough that I haven't had it topple over anything. So I'm not sure if that was planned in the design or not. Um, right below the top, we have a laser engraved Groff von Faber Castell logo, which is the Castell family crest with a crown on top. Um, this is different than the Dueling Knights logo that you'll see on Faber-Castell pens. Uh, in regard to those knights, if you look closely, they actually aren't carrying lances. They're actually carrying pencils, hearkening back to the origins of the company and their first products. They're actually known as the Pencil Knights. And then we have the clip. Um, it's a hinged design. Uh, it has a bit of a ski jump look to it with the downward slope and the swoop up at the end. Uh, I kind of like that the angle of the clip somewhat mirrors the angle of the crown at the end of the cap. Uh, the bottom of the cap is stamped with a thin ring and then on one side it says Graf von Faber-Castell and on the other side it's stamped with handmade in Germany. I do like that the lettering on this uh, cap is stamped. I think that it's a, a nice touch and an extra level of craftsmanship uh, as opposed to being laser engraved. The barrel is straight um, and it's made of uh, a material that they describe as precious resin. Uh, the material is engraved with message, methods which are typically used for jewelry or working with silver or things like that. Um, the barrel is then hand lacquered and polished repeatedly. Uh, and at the top of this picture, it, it kind of appears that the barrel is curved, but I assure you it's straight. Uh, that's just the distortion of the macro camera lens. Uh, the result is a service which is or service surface which is actually very visually interesting. Uh, and the texture has a unique subtle feeling in the hand. 
Uh, the manual techniques that they use here on the barrel really ensure that no two pins are identical. Um, they are unique examples of craftsmanship. Um, and I'm really liking this blue color a great deal. It's a very nice powder blue. Uh, at the end of the barrel, uh, it has a rhodium plated piece, and at the end of the, the barrel, it is rounded. Basically, it's the inverse of the indent at the top of the cap. Uh, and again, it's encircled with grooves. The cap snaps off to reveal this very nice 18 karat rhodium plated nib. Um, I think it's a real classy looking nib. I like that it's stamped and the vertical lines combined with the crest and crown make for a, an interesting motif. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, we'll see in the writing sample, but uh, this nib is outstanding. I, I care for this nib a, a great deal. It's very, very nice. Uh, the section is rhodium plated as well. And while I'm really not a fan of uh, slick metal sections, uh, as metal sections go, I find this one to actually be decent. Uh, the flared shape at the top of the section helps maintain a decent grip. Um, it also helps that the pen does not, while it does have a metal base at uh, 17 grams, it's really not overly heavy. Um, the little black piece extending from the end of the section is the capping mechanism. Um, I I've mentioned it many times before, but I tend to hold my pens close to the end of the section. Uh, and the design of this section helps me to not creep over the edge uh, and uh, onto the uh, capping mechanism, which on other pens I've found to be uh, a little uncomfortable at times. The, uh, the guilloche can be posted. Uh, it doesn't post very deeply, but it is very secure. Um, and there is a plastic inner cap, so it's not just metal on metal contact. Um, posting does backweight this pen just slightly, more than I personally would like, uh, but it's not unwieldy by means. Now, this is a cartridge converter pen. It does take quite a few turns to separate the barrel from the section. That's really no big deal, just more of an observation. Um, it did not arrive with any cartridges, but this Faber-Castell branded converter was included. Um, and it's currently filled with a brand new Graf von Faber-Castell ink. Uh, in conjunction with each of the new colors of the guilloche, they also came out with a matching ink color. Um, we'll take a, a closer look at it during the writing sample, but the matching color for this pen is called the Gulf Blue. Um, the inks do not come with the pens. Uh, they are sold separately. Now, I do find that this pen um, has a high level of grace and elegance. Um, you know, at first glance, it's a little thinner than pens that I typically prefer, but I really haven't experienced any comfort issues, uh, even during wrong, longer writing samples. Um, and I have very much enjoyed using this pen for the last few weeks, and I will actually really regret uh, having to send this off to one of you, but I'm very confident whomever wins this pen will enjoy it immensely. Um, as I mentioned at the top of this review, uh, the Guilloche retails for $350. Uh, that this is branded as a luxury pen, and while it has a luxury price, uh, I feel it also has a luxury quality to back up that price. Um, it is on the high end of what I feel the value cost is, but I, I don't feel that it's out of range. Um, it's available with a number of, um, or through a number of online retailers. I'll put a link to the products page on the Faber-Castell site if you'd care for any additional information on this very pen. Thanks go out again to Faber-Castell for providing this pen for review and for giveaway. Um, if you would care to win or enter to win this very nice pen, uh, simply be a subscriber to this channel and then leave a comment here on YouTube. Uh, today is Saturday, September 8th, 2018, and you have until the end of day on Tuesday, the 11th of September to enter. Uh, in regard to a comment topic, uh, earlier I described this pen as having a fair amount of elegance in my opinion, uh, so why don't you let me know what pen you feel has elegance. Elegance can mean uh, different things to different people, so let me know what it means to you. Uh, the topic is just a suggestion and is not required for entry into the contest. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the F Graf von Faber-Castell Guilloche. Um, here it is with a Faber-Castell loom. Uh, then here it is with a uh, Lamy All-Star. 
Uh, and then here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580AL. All kind of blue pens. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Conid bulk filler king size. Uh, here it is with a Parker dual fold Centennial. And then here it is with a Pelican M8, or M600. So here we have the Groff Vaughn Faber-Castell. And then it's the Guilloche. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using here is Groff Von Faber Castell. Uh, and it's called Gulf Blue. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, actually, when I first got it, I thought it was called Surf Blue. This is the bottle, and if you look, doesn't that kind of look like Surf? I don't know. It, it, it says Gulf, but it kind of looked like Surf when I first got it. So uh, I really like these uh, Faber-Castell bottles. They're very solid. They have a big, wide base to them, uh, and they, just like the pen, uh, kind of feel very elegant. Uh, in regards to some size comparisons, that uh, it's something similar to kind of a sky blue, maybe something a little bit lighter than Ackerman Number no. 1, the Passage Blau, um, and maybe a little bit lighter than something like uh, Franklin Christoph's Spanish Blue. But it's kind of like a, a, a powdery blue. And here we go with the writing sample. Uh, Faber-Castell makes outstanding nibs. Uh, their steel nibs are some of my favorite, uh, and this gold nib is uh, no exception to that. It's very, it's fairly smooth um, and uh, very little feedback, uh, and uh, provides a, a very nice writing experience. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation out of this gold nib. Uh, in regard to ink flow, this medium nib is rather generous with its ink flow, as you see. Uh, in regard to some reverse writing, it's okay. It's not super scratchy, but uh, it lays down kind of an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, This feed has no issues in keeping up whatsoever. So thanks again. Go out to Faber-Castell for providing this pen for review and for giveaway. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment uh, on YouTube as well as subscribe to this channel if you'd like an opportunity to win this very pen, which is uh, very nice. And as I mentioned uh, in the review, I'm going to regret giving this one up because uh, I've grown to enjoy this pen and I like its looks and I like the feel um, and it, uh, it has a distinct elegance that I enjoy as well. So I, I'm very confident that whoever wins this will enjoy it. So until next time, Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.